The dreamer falls away, a country full of oppression. People submitted to a leadership of the one who puts them to building landmarks that lead closer to the sky. But many of these labourers daydream about what happens when they're actually in them. But you see, as numbers multiplied, the security was divided. The addition of the Hebrews led to a petition that could contain their power and prevent a retaliation. No picket fences could help. Wealth and power was kept in the palace. This nation had no star to guide them. They needed a role model who could envision what it was to be a free man again. A deliverer was needed, a removal man. Someone who could be stirred by a passion of seeing these unjust actions. Someone who was able to act accordingly, not relying on what he didn't have, but rather seeing how not having the so-called right set of skills was the perfect ingredient on creating a so-called miracle. But why this group of people were in denial, little did they know that that same river was carrying the blessing that they would soon rely on. Skip forward a few years, we come across a prince. He was adopted into royalty and questioned why it was okay that this hard work was rewarded with lashing. A rest after hours of working in this Egyptian heat wasn't even a request that these slaves dared to ask him. And you see this questioning turned to anger, this anger turned to action. And our Egyptian prince took an uneducated swing at trying to turn these slaves into free men. You see, this task was as impossible as trying to train for a marathon while still trapped in a playpen. This regret took place. Guilt built up inside of him, and the pace was taken to get away from here. Anywhere would do, just give me that milk carton status. Missing. But as the flame was lit inside our young prince, we come across a burning bush. An everyday sight in the desert, but a second glance was taken. The same glance that saw this injustice saw that it was not consumed. God's man was here. The mission was given. The land of milk and honey was calling, but it needed somebody to take him there. But who am I to be a man to achieve this? An unqualified adopted son who can't even string a full sentence together. I will be with you, the Lord says. What other argument was needed to achieve the near impossible task? But after years of slaving away in the desert on a fuel that couldn't be put out, we return back to the palace. This place that was once a place of rest was now seen as a place of resistance. Pharaoh let my people go. A request that even ten plagues later was met with 600 chariots racing to the Red Sea to prevent one of the biggest getaway plans in history. A deliverer had nearly achieved the impossible. And as he stepped up to that 220 mile wide waters, the same God that saw him sail safely to the palace was with him as he separated them 500 meter deep seas. A passage to freedom was created. As the Hebrews were crossing, the Egyptian chariots were crossed off. A rescue plan that led from the heights of the palace to the depths of the sea was accomplished by one man, realizing that when God says, I am with you, that's all you need. Moses, a deliverer.